August 31st, St. Raymond Nonatus. St. Raymond Nonatus was born in Portella in the Diocese of Urgel, Catalonia, around the year 1203. He received the name of Raymond at his baptism, and the nickname Nonatus, non natus in Latin means not born, because he was not born normally, but was taken from the womb of his mother after her death. From the time he was very young, he manifested a great devotion to the Most Holy Virgin. Once Our Lady appeared to him and promised him her protection. Afterward, he was strongly tempted to sins against chastity, but he did not fall. He went to thank his patroness and consecrated his virginity to her. Mary appeared to him again, showing her satisfaction and advising him to enter the order of the Mercedarians, whose foundation she had inspired St. Peter Nolasco to make only shortly before in the year 1218. St. Raymond was ordained a priest and dedicated himself to the redemption of captives. He liberated 140 captives in Valencia, 250 in Argel, and 28 in Tunis. It was in this last city that he had the occasion to fulfill the special fourth vow of the Mercedarians, to exchange themselves and remain in captivity in the place of Catholic prisoners. In captivity he was zealous in teaching the Christian religion and made many converts which embittered the Mohammedan authorities. He was subjected to all kinds of cruelty. He was made to run the gauntlet and was at last sentenced to impalement. The hope of a greater sum of money as ransom caused the governor to commute the sentence into imprisonment. However, to prevent him from speaking about our Lord, for his engaging words were converting numerous Muslims, the Arab slave masters pierced his lips with a red-hot iron and closed them with a padlock. This padlock was only open for him to eat. After eight months of this torment, other Mercedarians arrived from Spain, bringing the ransom. The last ten years of his life were spent in Rome, where he became the representative of his order and in traveling throughout different countries to preach the crusade. As a cardinal representative of Pope Gregory the Ninth, he was sent to meet St. Louis of France and encouraged him to go on the crusade, which actually took place ten years later. St. Raymond Nonatus died in Cardona, a village close to Barcelona, on August 31st in the year 1240. He was only 37 years old, and he was canonized in the year 1657 by Pope Alexander the Seventh. Let us consider the torment St. Raymond Nonatus suffered of having a padlock perforating his lips. Imagine the enormous pain and discomfort even in one's sleep. Each time that he had to eat, a moor would come and open the padlock, breaking the wounds anew and causing new sufferings. Closing it could produce additional torments. Was he allowed to drink water during the day? Can you imagine the discomfort of drinking anything in this situation? He endured this life for a period of eight months. What did he do when he was freed? Did he have a psychological breakdown? Down, feel sorry for himself? No. He took an extraordinarily manly attitude and returned to a life of intense activity. His attitude demanded a highly supernatural spirit and a strong, virile personality. You see the astonishing fortitude of a soul such a man had. He traveled throughout Europe as an ambassador of the Pope, as a preacher of the Crusade. What a powerful impression the word of his sermons delivered by his wounded lips must have had on the people. Imagine such a scene. St. Raymond arriving in a city. The bells ringing, the word spreading that Father Father Raymond, the one with the wounded lips, is in town to preach a crusade on behalf of the Pope. All the nobles and people of the area gather around with their families, and he begins to speak. He speaks about the meaning of the sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ and what its profanation represents, how it is necessary to reconquer it for the glory of God and Catholic honor. He speaks with a voice and prestige of a saint, with the supernatural power of communication that only the saints have. The hearts of knights begin to be touched. The ladies weep and give their consent for their husbands to go and fight for the Holy Land. Everyone goes to confession, and the date of the crusade is announced. The practical preparations start. All this happens because a saint passes through that area. This imaginary scene may help you understand what the Middle Ages was. The influence of the saints and the good reception of the people that they gave them is what really explains why the Middle Ages had so many wonderful things and our era does not. The key is the presence of of the saints and the openness the people had for them. How few saints there are today. Knowing this, we understand the tragedy of the contemporary situation of the church and the world. Let us ask St. Raymond Nonatus to give us more saints to regenerate the church and the world and make the modern man recognize them and be receptive to their message.